Hey everyone, welcome back to Autodesk Fusion. In today's video, we're gonna go over how to change the parameters on my workbench file. So this is a file that you can purchase off Etsy and I'll link that below. And if you want to use this file, this is the video for you because I'm gonna show you how to do it. So you have the file open in Fusion here. And what you wanna do is find change parameters. And if you don't have the button listed right here, you can go to modify and you can go down to change parameters. And there's a bunch of things you can change here. Now I have it in imperial measurements. If you do work in metric, you can type in metric measurements. So I could do type in like 50 millimeters. Now it'll still show the value as inches, but your expression now will be shown in millimeters. So just keep that in mind. And you do have to type in this millimeter MM to make it work. But I'm just gonna go back to Imperial since most of my viewers are from the United States. So let's just go through real quick what you can change. So bench top thickness, that's of course this piece of plywood right here, or if you wanna use solid wood, that's fine but this is the thickness of it. So I have it set at two sheets of three quarter inch plywood and uh, bench top length, that's of course the length. And then we have the width. So let's say we wanted to make this right now, it's set at four foot by eight foot. So let's say I wanna do it six foot. So I'll change this to 72 and I'll change this to 36. And there you go, everything updated on the model. And side overhang, so I'm, I'm calling this kind of the front and these the sides here. So side overhang I have set at three inches, so that's the overhang right here. And the front overhang I also have set to three inches, so you can change that. Let's say we want the side overhangs maybe just at like 1.5 inch. That will change this to 1.5 and you can change this however you want. Workbench height, that's the overall height. I have it set to 34. Let's say you're a tall dude and you want to set it to 36. That'll bring that height up and that's the height from the top of the bench to the bottom of the legs, of course. And the toe kick height, which is really important, is this space right here between the bottom of the leg and the bottom of this little rail so your feet can slip under it you can change the height of that, which doesn't really matter for building it, right? When you're building this physically and putting it together, you can just make this height whatever you want, but at least you can represent it in the file here. The shelf thickness right here is the shelf right here of plywood. I have it set to three quarter of an inch. And then my spacers are these guys below. So I have it set to three. We probably don't need three here. Let's just bring that down to two and you can bring it down to one. Uh, I don't know if I can bring this down to zero. Yes, I can, so there you go. We'll just do two. You can ignore this warning right here. I will have this fixed in the file before you can download it. Okay, so now we have our workbench and that's how you manipulate everything. Okay. So let's talk about how we actually physically construct this thing. So what I'm gonna do is hide a few things. I'm gonna hide the plywood and the top rails and the bottom rails. And you're, we're left with the legs here. Now the legs are constructed with two by sixes and two by fours. The two by fours are just glued and screwed to the two by six here. And that'll give you a five and a half wide and five wide legs. So it's almost, it's almost symmetrical. And if you wanted to on these, on these legs here, you could just chop off, if you have a table saw, a half inch on this two by six and you'd have perfectly symmetrical legs, but you don't need to. Okay, so once you have these constructed, you can put these off to the side. And the next you're gonna wanna build the, I guess the rails I'm calling them, the top rails and the bottom rails. And these are all out of two by sixes. And you can see how they're constructed below here. And if you want from here, at least the bottom one, what I would do after you have these built is I would get your bottom shelf and I would put the bottom shelf in place first because when you attach the legs now, that plywood, if you attach the legs before, or at least before you attach this, you won't be able to get this plywood in here, or at least not very easily. I guess you could build everything like this uh, let's hide this. You could build everything like this first and then put that bottom shelf in. 
and then put the top rails in. But just make sure you don't build everything to first where you can't get this shelf in. And then, of course, you can put the top on. And that's pretty much it. And everything, you know, depending on how nice you want it, you can put screws from the inside instead of the outside. You could use glue. Um, and then, of course, one thing you might want to do if, it, if this is really, really long and you're worried about sagging. So let's let's go ahead and modify this. Let's take this back up to 96, which is a eight feet. And we'll even put this up to 48. OK, so now this has a decent chance of sagging since the span is so long. So what you could do is change the spacers to three and then you could add just with some of your scrap two by six, you could just add a little vertical two by six piece right here on this middle spacer uh, that is the same length as this to act as a support in the middle. Another thing you can do that I did not include in the plan is add some two by twos. So you could, you could glue and screw a little two by two in the inside corner of this leg, and that would allow these bottom rails to sit on it. So you're not just counting on the screws to hold it. And same thing up here, you could add a little two by two that go that sits on top of this plywood here that goes up to the next rails. And again, that would just give it a little bit more support. It might make it easier to build too. I did not include that in the model though, because not everyone is gonna wanna do that. Okay, so the one other thing I wanna show you is something I sell separately, and it's a script for getting a cut list for everything. So you can purchase my cut list script on Etsy as well, and you'll, you'll install it, and I've got directions how to do that. But once you are uh have your table to your size what you can do is you want to turn on something called let's see if i can even find it it's under view right here and you want to view your text commands now mine's showing hide text commands because i already have it open if you look all the way down at the bottom of the screen here there is a text command that you can minimize and to use this script you go to utilities and then scripts and add-ins and as long as you have scripts checked here, you'll find it right here, cut list generator. And you can hit play and it'll give you kind of a preview of it. And it'll ask if you want to save this as a CSV file so you can open it up in a different program. I'm just going to hit no for now. If you hit yes, it'll ask you where you want to save it and stuff. I'm just going to hit no. This will actually show up under the text command. So I'm going to hit plus here. And I'm going to drag this up larger. And what this script does is gives you all the names of all the pieces in the workbench. It gives you the metric measurements if you're using metric. And it also gives you the imperial measurements here. So you know what all the parts are you need. But even better, if you scroll down, it gives you a quantity summary grouped by size. So uh, we know we need 10 pieces that are one and a half, so a two by six by 36 inches. And so we can cut those 10 pieces. We know we need four at this length, four. And so it gives you the breakdown of your cut list. If you didn't want to open it, that CSV file up, you could just copy and paste this into like a Word document or something like that. All right, that's it. That is my workbench model and how to use it. Again, if you'd like me to create a tutorial in Fusion on how I actually built this model, let me know in the comments. Um, if you do purchase my plans on Etsy, I really appreciate it and uh, it helps support my channel and kind of keeps me motivated to keep doing this kind of thing. So, all right, guys, I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.